to look at an exciting chapter of the book of Daniel and Daniel's image. It's in Daniel chapter 2. So those of you who have your Bibles with you, turn with me to uh, Daniel chapter 2. Daniel records here the uh, dream that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had. And uh, in this dream, uh, it was more like a nightmare, really, uh, from the account of it. And uh, he couldn't remember the dream, so he called his uh, magicians and soothsayers to explain it, and they couldn't explain it. And finally they came to Daniel. And uh, in Daniel chapter 2, uh, in verse 27, you'll find that Daniel addresses uh, the king, and Daniel says, in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 27, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians and soothsayers show unto the king. Then in verse 31, we read here, You, O king, sourced and behold a great image. This great image whose brightness was excellent stood before you and the form thereof was terrible. The image's head was of fine gold, his breast and arms of silver, his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. You saw until the stone was cut out without hands. And this is called the stone kingdom. And many people have asked, what is that stone kingdom? You saw till the stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver and the gold broken to pieces together, became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them and the stone, mark this stone, the stone that smoked the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. That's a big stone, isn't it? This is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings. Nebuchadnezzar. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, that's Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece and Rome followed, given you a kingdom, power, and strength and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven has he given into your hand, and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. Anybody know what gold stood for in the kingdoms? Babylon. <clears throat> and after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to you. Anybody remember the second kingdom? Medo-Persia. And a third kingdom of brass. Anybody remember that one? Greece. Which shall bear rule over the earth. And the fourth kingdom, of course, you'll have guessed. Rome. Rome. Shall be strong as iron. And so it tells you of those. But uh, we'll continue on to verse 43. And whereas you saw that iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Now in verse 44, this is a key verse. And in the days of these kings, that's Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. That's something that's going to last, isn't it? And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it, the stone kingdom, the fifth kingdom, will stand for how long? Forever. For as much as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. Now that's a miracle, to cut a stone out of the mountain without hands. And it broke in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. The dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is sure. I like something that's certain and sure, don't you? So here you find a parade of four great empires. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. And these four empires rose and fell at the appointed time. 
that the fifth empire is a kingdom, it would never be destroyed. The $65 question is, what is the stone kingdom? And when you find the stone kingdom, you have a master key. So we will turn to the overhead projector and uh, we shall see an outline of these kingdoms. And uh, we'll show to you the outline of it. Now here is an outline of the image. Now, um, can you all see that all right? How's that? Right. Now, here you'll see is the head of gold. What empire does that stand for? Babylon. Babylon. The next one is breast and arms of silver. What does that stand for? Oh, you're all well informed. And this one for Greece. And the fourth one? Rome. Right, now those empires rose and fell exactly as foretold. This great empire of Babylon, this one lasted for about 300 years. Medo-Persia and Greece likewise and then Rome was the longest. Now when you turn this over and see what it stands for you find a very interesting position and here it is. Now can you all see that? Put that a bit higher, is that better? Now, here you find an interesting lineup in history. There is the head of gold, likened unto a lion, and here is the area of Babylon, Babylon the Great. Now, Babylon rose in 536 BC and collapsed in 533. 333. Now here's Medo-Persia. It was likened unto a bear. Not a nice fellow to meet last thing at night, is it? There. And there is the Medo-Persian Empire. Today, it would take around most of modern Iran and Iraq. Now Greece, this covers the Grecian Empire and uh, it rose in 334 BC and crashed in 60 BC. Then Rome rose in 60 BC, lasted till 476 AD, and that was like another terrible beast. And then when Rome disintegrated, you have the Roman Empire breaking up into 10 kingdoms with 10 kings. So there you have the rise and fall of four great empires right back here at the beginning and coming through and finishing with Rome. Now, God foretold that through Daniel. They rose and fell. But don't you think there'd be some mention or hint in the Bible of the British Commonwealth and the United States which is bigger than all of them put together? And that will give you the key to the stone kingdom. And the stone kingdom would strike the image upon its feet. So now we want to show to you what we believe is the stone kingdom. And the stone kingdom here is here. And we want to show you tonight that we believe that the stone kingdom is Israel. And it was a kingdom just like the others, but it's Israel. Now, when you consult with others, who is the fifth kingdom? Ah, they say, yes, brother, the fifth kingdom is the church. But I want to tell you this, the fifth kingdom is not the church. Do you know why? Because Babylon fell in 334 BC. 
and that was 300 years before the church arrived. Now, you won't remember all I'm telling you tonight, so we'll have a break for the commercials and uh, you'll be able to take these notes for yourself. Now, here is a book which will give you all the information I'm giving you tonight. This is called The Antichrist, Who Is He? and Who Is the Stone Kingdom? the fifth kingdom of Daniel. Now you'll find all the facts that I'm giving you tonight are in this book. And including these charts that I'm showing to you, they're available and you'll be able to get them from this book and all these charts like are going to be shown on the screen are in this book. So this is available. While I'm on the books, those of you who uh, missed the meeting last night, we were dealing with Russia and America in Bible prophecy, principally of the United States, with just a reference to them. And then on Saturday, we will be dealing with this subject at the seminar from one o'clock till five on how to understand the book of the Revelation. And uh, so next Saturday, we have a seminar on that and we'll explain simply and clearly how to understand the book of Revelation. For those of you who want a personal message, that's a book we've written on miracles of inner healing. If you have friends who have had traumas and hurts, suffered painful memories and so on, that will help them. And this is the latest book I've written, The Baptism on the Holy Spirit. How to receive the baptism. If you want a modern book, this is the latest book in the world on the baptism. It's only recently just out. And this will explain the baptism simply and clearly and there'll be many people who'll receive the baptism of spirit by just reading the book because it tells them how to receive the baptism while they're reading the book. And it's right up to date because it continues from the book of Acts down to our present day and on the last page it shows you the names of those who have received the baptism including Margaret Court, Bobby Lim and Neil Hawke. So it's right up to date. And uh, then those of you who prefer to have tapes to listen to it, these are some tapes by Jean on inner healing and on children receiving the baptism of the Spirit. And you can uh, obtain these tapes in the same table. So the books are for the bookworms and the tapes. <laughs> That's right. If the books are for the bookworms, the tapes will be for the tapeworms. <laughs> so that should cover everybody's needs, shouldn't it? So those are the books. I mention those because you might uh, not remember all these dates that I'm giving you, and they're all in the, uh, the book that I've mentioned on the Antichrist. And so we're going to show to you how these empires rose and fell exactly as outlined and show to you their history. Now here you find their history. Here you find that the first beast is Babylon, rose in 604 BC, crashed in 536. Then Medo-Persia rose in 536 and was succeeded by Greece in 336. And then Rome Imperial, 62 BC to 476 AD. So you have from 604 BC right down to 476 AD, a thousand years of history of four empires foretold and fulfilled to the very letter. Isn't that tremendous? A thousand years of history foretold by the prophet Daniel. And so, he tells there of the first beast, the head of gold, silver and brass and iron and clay, and so those empires rose and fell. Now, here's an interesting fact. If you ask people today, what is the fifth kingdom? Ah, they'll say, brother, the fifth kingdom is the church. Now, the church has a wonderful ministry, but it is not the fifth kingdom because it says the stone kingdom broke the head of gold. Now, as you see, 
Babylon rose in 604 BC and collapsed in 536. Now the church could not have destroyed Babylon in 536 because the church hadn't appeared for 500 years. Can you see that? Now it couldn't be the church that broke uh, Medo-Persia because it broke up in 336 uh, BC so that was 300 years before the church was formed. So the church is not the stone kingdom because we read there that the stone kingdom would break each of those kingdoms in turn. And so they've been broken years before the church was formed. Then you come to Greece and the Grecian Empire collapsed in 62 BC and the church still had 60 years before it appeared. So the Christian church is not the fifth kingdom. It did not break those empires and then Rome Imperial collapsed in AD 476 and it wasn't the Christian church that destroyed pagan Rome, it was the Goths. In AD 476 they broke into Rome and the Roman Empire collapsed, the pagan Roman Empire collapsed in AD 476. So the church did not break any of those. So someone says, oh well, it's uh, Christ's kingdom. But you'll notice here that this empire collapsed 500 years before Jesus appeared. And in any case, Jesus isn't the stone that falls upon people. He is the stone which the builders rejected and Jesus said, I have not come to destroy men's lives but to save them. So Jesus is not the stone kingdom because the stone kingdom is going to break these empires one in after the other. And Jesus said, I haven't come to destroy men's lives, I've come to save them. So you see, the church is not the stone kingdom because they, three of them all collapsed before the church was formed. And Christ's kingdom is not the stone kingdom because Jesus does not destroy lives, he saves them. Can you see that? Well now, when you see that, you'll find something very interesting because now you can see quite simply in history what happens. Now, can you all see that one now? Now, looking at the head of gold, breast and arms of silver and brass and iron and clay, you see there's empire number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. We want to show you tonight is not the church, not Christ's kingdom, it's Israel. And God said of Israel that with them he would break the powers. Now, you find that the ten tribes in captivity were the ones who broke those empires. It was Israel. Now, to show you how that operates, here is another illustration. Now, first of all, you see the same image of the man. Can you all see that all right? High enough for you? Now, we're going to see the man superimposed over the map of Europe. Now, watch this. The head of gold covers the area of the Babylonian Empire. The breast and arms covers the area of Medo-Persia. You'd call that today Iran in Iraq. The brass covers the area of the Grecian Empire. And the legs was Rome, an empire east, and the Roman Empire west. You see the image of the man? Now look, empire number one, number two, number three, number four, and it says the stone fell upon the feet of the image. You see that? Do you see the stone kingdom of Britain right in position? And these ten tribes on their way, they were taken into captivity as I showed you last night. How many here 
uh, were present last night. May I see your hands? Or better still, hands of those who were not here last night. Oh, all right. Well now, for those of you who were not here last night, we want to remind you that Judah was taken to Babylon captive. And that, that's the two tribes. The Israel of ten tribes were taken here to Medo-Persia. So Judah was in Babylon and Israel the ten tribes in Medo-Persia. But they kept in touch. And when the time came for Babylon to be broken, then the ten tribes kept in touch with their brethren of Judah. They diverted the waters of the river Euphrates, went along the dry bank at the time of the feast of Belshazzar, and Babylon fell. The people that were used for the spearhead were a people called the Getae. And they were some of the ten tribes in captivity that went to release their brethren. And so the, they were used as a spearhead. And then when the time came for Medo-Persia to collapse, then some of the ten tribes had moved across in this area and they were called the Mesogetae and they helped to break uh, Medo-Persia and then with Greece and with Rome, Rome was broken by the Goths as I mentioned and the Goths in German is a derivation, Gott is the German name for God and so Goths means God's people, they were the ten tribes. So the ten tribes of Israel were used as spearhead troops to break each of, help to break each of those empires on their way to the Isles of the West. And so now you have the Isles of the West that we saw last night, the Stone Kingdom. Turn it round and you'll see something very interesting. Now, look at this. Here is Babylon. There it is. There is Medo-Persia. There is Greece. Here is Rome, Western Rome, an empire, Eastern Rome. First empire, helped to be broken by the ten tribes in captivity, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, and then the ten tribes come to Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Holland, all this fringe down here, scattered, others scattered across Europe, and then they came to the Isles of the West, the stone kingdom of Daniel. Can you see that? Isn't that tremendous? Isn't that a tremendous outline of Bible prophecy? Do you see how in, it's not only historical, but it's geographical? See how it moves successfully from Empire 1 to Empire 2, and then to Empire 3, and then to Empire 4, and then see how it logically moves on to Empire 5? Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that show to you the wonder of Bible prophecy? That God foretold the rise of four mighty empires, each in their turn, rising and falling but he said the fifth empire the stone kingdom will not be destroyed don't you find that comforting isn't that reassuring in a world that's being shaken today don't you find that a very cheering and positive message it gives you something to build your hopes on for the future when you see God's majesty demonstrated and to see Israel taking her place exactly as foretold in the Bible. God's master plan. And it says, the stone fell upon the image. The stone kingdom of Britain, the ten tribes as they are moving across, helped to break four great empires. And in the Isles of the West, four more empires and it says on whom it will fall it will grind the powder and so the first empire was the Spanish, um, Spanish Armada of 1588 do you remember the Spanish Armada? 
how the Spanish Armada sailed up here. Sir Francis Drake met them and the storms and the Spanish Armada crashed on the rocky coast of Britain. Do you remember that? So then Napoleon said, I'll crush this Britain and I'll conquer Europe. And so Napoleon gathered 400,000 troops at Boulogne, tried to get control of the English Channel and failed, and he went over to Moscow. That was the end of Napoleon, and he met his Waterloo here, right at Waterloo. So Kaiser William, in 1914, he said, I'll succeed and I'll crush this people. And in 1914, he said, I'll have Christmas dinner in Buckingham Palace when I conquer Britain. But he never got to Buckingham Palace. He finished up chopping wood in Holland after the war over here. But some of you can remember now, Adolf Hitler said, I'll do it. I'll crush this kingdom. And some of you can remember 1940 and 1945. And he got right to that very area of Calais and looked across there only 22 miles, but enough to stop the Luftwaffe and to stop the Germans. And then he turned over to Russia, and that was the end of Adolf Hitler. Can you see that in Bible prophecy? Don't you think it's logical? Don't you see the historical view? Well, now, it says the stone was cut out without hands. Now, how was the stone cut out without hands? Now, here is an outline of the British Isles, and here, at one time, what is now the British Isles, was a huge peninsula jutting out from Europe. Here you see is Holland, here is Denmark, and do you, can you see that shaded area there? Lightly shaded? Now, that's what Britain was like before it was cut off 